Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the next topic of test ng that is run multiple test in test example. Now, in last video, we saw the installation process, and there we saw that we are using test annotations. Now, I'll talk about this test annotation. In fact, I'll I'll, I'll do a code where I'll run multiple tests using that test annotations. So first, let's understand the scenario what we are going to practice. In this example, we will see how we can execute multiple test annotations in an example. Now, the sequence of ex execution of test cases will be changed here. By using test annotation, different methods can be executed easily, but the sequence of these methods is not defined. We'll see this through an example. So the steps required while creating the test annotation class, first, you need to go and create a test annotation class. Second thing, in this class, we'll create three methods and define three annotations to all methods. Third thing, in all methods, we'll pass the path of driver and the link of the website to test. And at the end of execution, we will check whether the report of the test method is executed or not. So in this case, we will take the code from our portal. So this is the code that where we are running multiple test websites. So here we will write codes for executing three websites. So just go to this run multiple three websites example, open this code and take the code from here and come to this test ng package as usual, create, uh, now you here you can create a test ng class, go to this test ng, create test ng class and just uh, look for, just name it as, just change the name of the class that is multiple website test. Go for finish. Now let's remove this. And in fact, let's add the code copied. So here first this web driver. Now see, the rest of the code seems to be similar. Uh, it's like just how we do uh, in case of Selenium. So the steps are similar. What we are exactly doing here is we are trying to open three different websites using three different methods. So in case of Selenium, what we used to do in that case, we were, we were executing the codes, uh, like uh, we were writing the codes inside the main function and we were executing at one place. Here, what we are doing, we are creating three different methods and here we will execute these three methods. Now the test annotation, what the use of this test annotation is that, it will tell that uh, what exactly this method is going to do. And this test annotation will return you a report at the end of the execution. So once this Amazon site method executes, you'll get the test report. If the test works fine, then you will get the test report as everything good. And like the outcome will be uh, like the test passed. If anything goes wrong in this case, then you will get outcome as test fail. So what I'll do here, I'll do the few changes that is, first I will change the path of my driver. Uh, like this is the path of my driver. So I'll change this path in all cases. So basically uh, this is the path and we will set this path for all the methods. So for each links, we are writing a different methods and just by using test annotations, uh, before every method, we are trying to just check the status or the report of test annotations. Now that's the use of test annotation and that's how it's different from Selenium and why it's better. Here you get the te test reports for each and every executions. So the path is changed. Uh, in fact, here, instead of CNN, I'll be using a different website link because CNN is a heavy website. So it takes a long time to execute. So instead of CNN, let's go for any different website. So I'm going for Instagram. Now let's save this and as usual, go and click on the run button. When you do this, so the website will open for the first time. And in that case, the Amazon website will open for the first time. Once the Amazon website is completely executed, then it will move to the second one, that is the Instagram website. And once that is done, then it will shift to the third one, that is the Yahoo website. So this is the Insta one, once this will shift to then again the third one, that is the Yahoo website. So all this process, like in three methods, we have defined three different links, so it's opening separately. Now once all of this is done, then at the end of this, when you come to the console part, here you see the name of the methods are mentioned. That means we have three methods, so all the names of these methods are mentioned. Here, in fact, it shows that here the default run is three and the pass state is three. So that means we have executed three methods and because we don't have any errors, so these three methods, uh, like all the three methods passes. So there is three pass, zero failure and zero skip. So that's what test annotation do. It gives you the complete test status report. 
that what exactly the status of your test cases is or uh, uh, like to, after execution. That's what test ng do. Now, one thing more of what I'll let you see. Uh, see. I like we have written the methods in sequence. So that's why the websites were executing in sequence. Uh, that's what the feeling we get. But if we change the sequence of this method, that means I bring the Amazon one below and I keep the Lex2, that is the Insta and the Yao one at top. That means first the Insta, then Yao. So according to the sequence, uh, like the first one that's execute, uh, that should execute is the Insta one. After that, Yao and the and third, the Amazon one. But when we change the sequence, when we change the sequence of declaration, and then we run the code, then you see, though the Amazon method is written at the last, but still the Amazon opens first. And in the second case, you see the Insta opens. And in the third case, you'll see the Yahoo opens. So one thing that's clear from here is uh, writing the code in sequence is not important. You can write codes anywhere. When you are using the test annotation, then what the test annotation do, it takes it picks any test cases and starts executing. Now there is problem when you are trying to do a login process, then you will face this problem that you are writing uh, different test cases at different place. In fact, login code somewhere after that, you will have the codes for the next page that you need to execute. Now, if this is the case, like the test execution will pick any of the methods and start executing, then you have problems here. So in that case, you will have some problems in understanding that which test case to run first and which to run first. Second, so that's the problem when you're using the test annotations. So the sequence is not maintained in case of test annotations. So it's like it only pick any methods at random. So just to maintain the sequence, we have different concepts like priorities, dependencies. So we'll talk about in next video. So this is uh, like all about how the test annotation executes and as well as uh, what the test annotation do. Just that's, this, that's to make clear here in this video and in this example. Then stay tuned and bye-bye.